Hi there. Um, while I'm sitting here watching my TV show, and all of a sudden, I'm thinking, uh, the phrase kept going in my mind, um, you have already exercised the faith that saved you. And I thought, well, let's look up, I, I mean, I couldn't get it out of my mind, so I just stopped, paused my TV show, I'm watching Contagion, I shouldn't be watching that, but, um, I like you have already exercised the faith that saved you you have exercised the faith that saved you and i was thinking about the plagues of egypt you know and when it came to the death of the firstborn um they had to put the blood on the doorposts right and because of that you think of something kinetic that you have to do but i want you to know that you have all if you are in christ you have already put the blood on your doorpost. And it is not a matter of presently exercising some extra faith that you don't have. You already have exercised the faith that saved you. And uh, I want to read 2 Timothy 1 here as an example. Um, Who has saved us? That's past tense. And has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, where I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Now I'm going to say something really offensive to the Arminians. Um, the grace that we have received was given to us in Christ before the foundation of the world because we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him in love. And we were predestinated unto sonship according to the good pleasure of God's will in his love to the praise of the glory of his grace in which he's made us accepted in the beloved. He has placed us in Christ and seen us in Christ and known us in Christ and given us grace in Christ before the world began, but then manifested that grace and that salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. See, he has saved us and has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us when? In, uh, before the world began, in Christ. See, we are in Christ. We are a special group if we are believers because we are in the person of Christ and Christ is in us. And God considers this as one person called the new man, the new creation, the head with his body, the bridegroom with his bride. This is one entity that the Father knows from eternity past and is working all things according to the counsel of his will to bring into manifestation. And he manifested our salvation and the grace and his own purpose in Christ when he appeared and was manifested as a man, right? Because this grace, this purpose, this salvation, this holy calling, all of it was not according to our works, it was in his own purpose and grace, which was what? Man given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began and now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death in himself and has brought life and, light, uh, life and immortality to light through the gospel. Okay? Um, the gospel came to you and you believed it. And yes, there is accountability there. You could have hardened yourself and not believed, but God did know who would believe because he knew them in Christ. And when that gospel came, it came and announced to you the salvation that God had prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And when you believed it, you were given the grace that had been given to you in Christ according to God's purpose from the foundation of the world before time began, and you were saved and called with the holy calling. What is the holy calling? We are all partakers of the heavenly calling, which is that the captain of our salvation is bringing us into glory to be manifested as the many sons of God. The blood is on the doorpost for you. You have exercised what is needed for you to be saved because you're already saved. If you believe in Jesus Christ and have the witness in yourself, you have been delivered from the wrath which is to come. 
You don't need to fear that. Okay. You are saved. You, there's nothing else required now but to watch and wonder at what God is doing as he reveals his salva salvation in time. I don't know what else I need to say about that other than, as Peter says, now fix your hope perfectly on the grace which was to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There is a grace to be brought to you that is going to make up all the deficiencies that are in you because of your flesh. The reason you're not a glorified son of God uh, and don't act like Jesus is because of your flesh. And he's going to transfigure the body of your flesh and make it like the body of his glory in this grace that's coming to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And now we're just to fix our, our hope perfectly on this grace that's to be brought to us at that revelation. And this grace was given to us in Christ before time began, according to God's purpose, and he saved us. And that salvation is, in a sense, past tense. And yet he's going to save our body. He's going to redeem our body. He sealed us with the Spirit unto the day of redemption. We've received the Spirit, and he is the guarantee of the redemption of the purchased possession, which is our whole being. Spirit, soul, and body is going to be preserved complete at the presence of the Lord when he comes. Ah. Okay, I gotta go. Um, I'll talk to you later.